Welcome to the Summit City, home to the two six O's dedicated high school athletes and fans. Each victory and celebration captured by our camera. Treasure the highlights from the Summit Athletic Conference this season or complete games live or on demand. After all, nobody's more proud to call Fort Wayne home than SummitCitySports.com. I just want to be the best in basketball, so uh, I want to be the greatest of all time to play women's basketball. So uh, I just know there's people out there working just as much as me, so I just want to keep working hard and keep that intensity going. And so one day I can pursue my dreams of being in the WNBA and playing overseas. So I just want bigger things to come in my life. I remember when I started in March, she could do zero pull-ups. She did have a great 25-inch vertical when she first started. Uh, she only weighed 150 pounds. Uh, one of our main mottos is do the simple things exceedingly well, and that's where we started. So we started the foundation, um, building her base, and now we've got to basically the peak of our pyramid of things that we can do with her. So uh, we didn't skip any levels. We did all the basics, and she got really, really good at them, and that's what's led her to become as great as she is at, at basketball and performance. I've watched her grow. Uh, the confidence-wise, the strength-wise, the jumping ability, her footwork, it's, it's really amazing to kind of watch for a girl her size, being 6'3", 6'4", to move like she can move and do the thing and be as agile as she is along with the strength. Thank you for watching Summit City Sports. To help broaden our coverage, we're asking you to become a monthly sponsor to our Patreon account. We produce weekly highlights and live video broadcast. When the Homestead Girls Golf Team won its first state title in program history, we were there. When Fort Wayne brought back three state titles in cross country, we were there. We believe in sharing positive stories and setting the standard for how high school sports should be covered. Join us and donate today. At the University of St. Francis, you'll find everything you need to succeed from business, nursing and science to the arts all with a 99% career success rate. You belong here. 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 I belong here. The athletes has always been here, um, you know, and they're getting better. Um, you know, I'm watching, you know, uh, Summit City Sports, man, they're doing an awesome job. And, I mean, that's a plug. Them dudes are, are doing an outstanding job. And I'm able to be in Nashville and watch games uh, on YouTube um, that they're broadcasting, and I'm seeing the talent. And it is just truly outstanding. And, I mean, you guys have seen uh, the talent that's in the NFL now from Fort Wayne, Indiana, the talent that's coming up now, and the talent that you know is 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 is, is just here, man. It's just is really is really cool. I like to stay active. I try to come in here at least three times a week and just get my one-hour workout in. Since September, I think I've put on 22 pounds of muscle. I think my vertical has gone up plus five inches. I've, I've gotten a lot faster since then, too. I can hit the ball further. In football, I can push people around more. It's basketball easier, too. Just being stronger just makes everything easier. Brandon started with Jim Rat's basketball training. After one of the sessions, he came up to me and he wanted to know if he could do more. So Brandon started the EDGE program in November, in addition to the club training he was doing because it offers personalized programming for his athletic goals. PSM Performance uses a long-term athletic development pyramid. At such a young age, it's really good for Brandon to set the foundation of athletic development. Since he is in season all year round, he has to be ready for all the physical demands, so he does a lot more strength training just because in basketball he sprints and cuts a lot. In baseball he's doing a lot of sprinting. In football he does a lot of sprinting and jumping, so preparing him to withstand the physical demands of those games, he does a lot more strength training. I like all the lower body stuff the best. I do goblet squats, split squats, back squat, front squat, a lot of those. Tyler knows what's best for me. He always points me in the right direction. He just pushes me to go harder every day. In four years, this, this could be you. you. At the University of St. Francis, you'll find everything you need to succeed, from business, nursing and science, to the arts. You belong here. Anderson Heating and Air, locally owned and operated with over 50 years of experience. Call us today and get a free quote on a brand new furnace and AC, financed and available. Don't wait. Call us today and sign up for a maintenance agreement and stay cool. 
Our maintenance agreements will ensure that you're first in line if you have an emergency and we'll send one of our service techs out for cleanings twice a year. Call us at 557-0958 or request an appointment on our website. Call Anderson Heating and Air where your emergency is our emergency. choose Kelly Chevrolet. We offer a wide selection of new and used inventory with a team that guides you to your perfect fit. Our certified pre-owned options ensure peace of mind with warranties and rigorous inspections. Competitive pricing, flexible financing, and convenient trade and services making your dream Chevrolet a reality. Trust our experienced service team to keep your vehicle in top shape and enjoy free car washes as long as you own your vehicle. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Black Hawk Christian School here in Fort Wayne, Indiana. And tonight we got high school basketball for you right here at Mark Davidson Court between the Black Hawk Christian Braves and the Knights of Mishawaka Mary. And I'm Thad Goff. Thomas Nolan is my cameraman tonight. Black Hawk Christian comes into this game at 8-3 and three on the season. Their most recent game, or should say their most recent series of games, was over the Christmas break, just two two days, well, starting three days before New Year's Day, December 29th, they started with the Ray Fernie Holiday Classic in Lawrenceburg. The Braves won three of those games. They won the two games on December 29th against Beach Grove and Pike Central. Then they won their semifinal game against Whiteland, but lost to Newport. That's a team out of Newport, Kentucky, that knocked them off 79-54. to Overall, the Braves are 8-3 and three on the season, so it's a good season so far for them. And it's about a week since their last game, so they've had plenty of time to rest up and get back in rhythm for this upcoming game. Of course, the strongest player that the Braves have as far as scoring the basketball is concerned has been Kellen Pickett, the 6'9 power forward. It's his second year in a row averaging double figures for the Braves, he's averaging 18.5 points per game. Also, you got some quality guards who can shoot the ball. Isaac Smith, 13.7 points per game. That's what he's averaging. From three-point land, he is shooting it at 35%. Also, it's worth mentioning Aiden Muldoon is having a heck of a season. He's averaging 10.5 points per game. He was averaging just three points per game last year, shooting at 43% from three-point land. This Mishawaka Marion team comes in with a record of four and seven. They did get a win, two wins actually, in tournament play. That was at Homestead High School. They ended up knocking off both Homestead and Carroll. The two Fort Wayne teams they played, they beat them both. It was basically Mishawaka Marion's, if you like, third trip to the city of Fort Wayne. That for a tournament. They've also played on the road at Bishop Lures, and now they're back here tonight taking on Black Hawk Christian. William Owens and Zion Rhodes are the leading scorers for Mishawaka Marion. Owens averages 13 points per game. Rhodes averages 11.9 points per game. Well, in just a moment, we're going to have the announcement of the starting lineups. That will be preceded by the pregame prayer as well as the national anthem, and that's coming up very shortly. The pregame clock is now at zero. You just heard the buzzer, so uh, we'll keep it right here, but pause the broadcast, so to speak, as we have the pregame prayer and the national anthem and the announcement of the starting lineups here on SummitCitySports.com.
Please maintain appropriate behavior at all times so that together we can bring honor to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And now, will you please rise for a word of prayer followed by our national anthem. Please pray with us. God, we are grateful for this opportunity you've given us. Thank you for bringing both teams and both schools here. We pray that in the spirit of competition that uh, the players would give their best efforts tonight, that no one would be injured on either team. And we pray that our attitudes and actions would bring glory to you in everything that we do, both as players, coaches, fans, and everyone here tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Time. Let's meet the starters for tonight's ball game. First, for the guests on the scoreboard, the Knights of Marion High School. Number one is a six foot senior, Jordan Mouse. Number three is a 5'11 junior, Paxson Sullivan. Number four is a six foot four inch senior, Zion Rose. Number five, six foot three inch junior, William Owen. Number 11, a six foot senior, Jackson Horvath. Well, Guthrie flexing his muscles as he comes out onto the court as Blackhawk Christian is ready to take the court against Mishawaka Marion. Before this game gets started, a quick word from some of our sponsors. Big Eyed Fish has been around the Northeast Indiana area for generations. Like their Facebook pages for updated promotions and enjoy the best fish in Fort Wayne in a family-friendly environment at Big Eyed Fish. Well, the environment tonight is as loud as it always is here at Mark Davidson Court especially when the Braves take the floor for basketball. This is a three-time state championship winning Braves team. Muldoon battling for the ball. It is off of the Knights, and the Braves get the early possession to start it out. Aiden Muldoon improved vastly as far as points per game goes off of last year when he averaged just three points per game. Marion comes out in a 2-3 zone as Guthrie comes out to set the screen for Muldoon. Pick it. Feeds it to the wing, and Sefton's three doesn't fall. A good box out by the Knights. That's Zion Rhodes coming down with the board for Mishawaka. Mishawaka Marion, that is. Jordan Moss with the feed over to the far side. Loose ball. Muldoon causing some trouble, and he forces the steal into the hands of Guthrie. And a whistle blows.
It's out of bounds to Mishawaka Marion. No score yet. So one really good play on the defensive end by Aiden Muldoon as he up to force that turnover. I think Guthrie in the end is going to get credit for the steal. That shot won't go. That was Rhodes taking the shot, and here come the Braves. Muldoon, a 43% three-point shooter, has it in his hands, but he finds Pickett, the big man, six foot nine. Pickett trying to go to work, gets it off. That's an air ball. Bryce Sefton keeps it alive. Muldoon fires and hits a three ball. Early on, Aiden Muldoon, the much improved sharpshooter. Loose ball, Sefton nearly caused the turnover. Backing down is Rhodes. Rhodes puts it up and in. And Marion gets on the board. Zion Rhodes, second leading scorer for this night's team. Pulls Marion within one as Muldoon was double teamed. Sefton came open. Pick it, has it blocked. William Owens. And Muldoon going after the turnover. He's got it. A steal right back for the Braves, and Muldoon was fouled. The only question is, was it on the shot? Looked like the signal is it was on the shot. My apologies there. It's still 3-2 to two in favor of Blackhawk Christian, not 4-3. to three. They call it on Paxson Sullivan. And so Muldoon goes to the line. He will shoot two free throws here. They do call it a shooting foul. As Muldoon adds to Blackhawks' lead. Muldoon had the Braves' only field goal, still does have the Braves' only field goal up to this point, and he will go two for two. Lost the senior guard. They worked this one around to Paxson Sullivan. Zion Rhodes for three. That's a little bit long, and Muldoon <laughs> beat out his own teammate, Kellen Pickett, the bigger man. Pickett has had a shot blocked in this game. Smith feeds it to him on the inside. Here goes Bryce Sefton. Guthrie a little surprised by that pass. Muldoon's three doesn't fall. Guthrie in traffic, gets the jump hook. Will Guthrie scoring in traffic for the Braves. Moving to his right is Paxson Sullivan. He gives that one off to Owens. Owens drives through traffic. Pickett blocks it. Owens keeps it alive. Horvath was thinking about a three. Instead, he finds Rhodes. Moss wide open. And skying over Pickett for the rebound is Rhodes. Check that Owens, and Owens is fouled. That's going to be on Pickett. Looked like it was on the shot, and that's what the call is. 4.45 to go as the shot is good. William Owens at the free throw line for the first time tonight. This Marion team is 4-7 and seven this year, but they're used to success under head coach Rob Berger. Had a lot of winning seasons with him at the helm. I believe it's Berger's fourth head coaching stint. He's also been at Mishawaka High School as well as Wawasee, just to name a few of the schools he's been at. Smith can shoot from the wing. He comes up short that time. Guthrie had it but lost it. Sullivan forced it away, blocked on the other end by Sefton, but it comes out to Most. We've had a grand total of three block shots so far tonight, two from the Braves, one from the Knights. However, the Knights have gotten the offensive board on both of the Braves' block shots. And Zion Rhodes, a little long with the jumper. Guthrie wins the battle for the board. Pickett drives, finds Sefton as the Knights go back into that 2-3 zone. Sefton drives, blocked. Recovered by Pickett. He has it blocked. Both times it was Rhodes who blocked the shot. 
Knights trying to beat the Braves down the court. They do, but Owens had a little trouble with the ball, but eventually he finds Paxson Sullivan for the deuce. Wide open, Muldoon. He's hit one already. Make it two. Second triple for Muldoon. Driving through quickly, Sullivan gets by everybody. Paxson Sullivan with a blow by Bucket. And it's 10 to 8 in Blackhawks' favor. Sefton looking for help. They get it to Smith on the wing. Muldoon will try again. Not this time. He's now two for three from beyond the arc. Sullivan coming down the floor. He gets a screen from Rhodes. Owens guarded by Pickett. Owens gives Pickett about six inches, but has been able to get some work done against him, and he just did it again there. That's Owens' first bucket from the field. Long pass, knocked away from Pickett. Paxson Sullivan the steal, and he takes it to the cup. That pass was meant for Pickett, and Sullivan jumped right in front of it. Smith right back on the other end to answer for the Braves. Basketball, number 11, Isaac Smith. Smith is the Braves' second leading scorer this season. He averages over 13 points per game. As Horvath puts up the jumper right over Smith and knocks it down, and Marion retakes the lead. Pick it, bobbled it, but recovered. He finds Guthrie, and William Owens rips it away. Marion's defense coming up with one big play after another. Owens not scared to pick it. He did dish that one off, but he's been able to make some plays against him. That's Muldoon with the block shot that time. Whistles blow. It looks like it's a foul against Marion. It will be Blackhawk ball down two. 118 to go, and they call the foul on Zion Rhodes. Entering the contest today for Marion. Brandon Foster and Ben Warnell come in for Blackhawk Christian. And Luke Mans excuse me, Luke Mansfield's in for Blackhawk Christian for Mishawaka Marion. It's Ben Warnell and Brandon Foster who check in. Pickett. Swings it outside. They get back to Pickett in the middle of that zone. Blocked on the inside. Zion Rhodes. Marion has relied heavily on zone defense as Owens spots up. His three doesn't fall. 55 seconds left in the first quarter. They get it to Pickett. Moving his way inside and Pickett scores, and that is his first bucket from the field for the night. But it ties the game up at 14. You would not expect it to be his last. Pickett's averaging 18 points a game, but right back at you, it's Zion Rhodes who gives the lead to Marion. Pickett slows down. He feeds Guthrie. Guthrie draws Rhodes, and Rhodes commits the foul with 22.9 to play. Third team foul against Marion tonight. That's third team foul for this first quarter, that is. Guthrie able to connect on the first one. Blackhawk Christian will be in action tomorrow night. They'll go on the road to take on Concordia. Now, Concordia has done well against quality opponents. They've beaten Belmont and Northwood. Question for them is how can they handle a big man like Pickett, a big man who's an incredible scorer? Cutting inside was Warnell, and it's blocked down to eight seconds. Braves have some time. Muldoon drives and scores. 
And Blackhawk Christian takes the lead, coming down to two seconds. A desperation heave just off the front iron on the shot by Brandon Foster. Blackhawk Christian in a battle, but they lead it 18-16 after one. And we're back after this break right here on SummitCitySports.com for the second quarter. Anderson Heating and Air, locally owned and operated with over 50 years of experience. Call us today and get a free quote on a brand new furnace and AC, financed and available. Don't wait. Call us today and sign up for a maintenance agreement and stay cool. Our maintenance agreements will ensure that you're first in line if you have an emergency and we'll send one of our service techs out for cleanings twice a year. Call us at 557-0958 or request an appointment on our website. Call Anderson Heating and Air, where your emergency is our emergency. Why choose Kelly Chevrolet? We offer a wide selection of new and used inventory with a team that guides you to your perfect fit. Our certified pre-owned options ensure peace of mind with warranties and rigorous inspections. Competitive pricing, flexible financing, and convenient trade and services, making your dream Chevrolet a reality. Trust our experienced service team to keep your vehicle in top shape and enjoy free car washes as long as you own your vehicle. We start the second quarter. Uh, Blackhawk Christian is leading, but in a battle against Mishawaka Marion. Marion doesn't really have a player, at least not that's been in the game, who matches the height of Kellen Pickett, and yet they have been able to affect him fantastically. There's an offensive board by Elias Norgard, and Norgard on the inside able to reach over and knock the ball away. That's going to be a foul on Aiden Muldoon. Now, if you're a Blackhawk fan, you might have been wanting an over-the-back call on the last play there on the part of Elias Norgard. Hard to tell if it was a legitimate over-the-back. Or if it was just simply his height over smaller guys out on the floor. That shot won't fall, and that's the easiest rebound that Kellen Pickett has had all night. Marion has been crashing the offensive glass tonight. That's a big reason why they're still in this ball game. Smith, 0 for so far from beyond the arc. As Owens comes the other way. Owens is wide open. He's going to use the paint. Has it blocked. Pickett with the rejection. He got back in time. Pickett's the tallest man on the floor, and that time his height and his shot blocking ability played a huge advantage. Out off of Marion, Paxson Sullivan tried to throw it off of Smith's foot. The Knights have done a great job defending against Pickett tonight. But Pickett with a really good defensive play on that last Marion possession. He's able to reach up, get the shot, but he missed it. Sullivan comes down the floor. Pickett only four points so far in the game as Sullivan... Feeds that one over to Ben Warnell. Using the screen is Norgard. From the free throw line on Muldoon. He came from the blind side. One on one and Muldoon's going to win. Steal and a score by number two, Aiden Muldoon. He didn't even see him. Muldoon came from the blind side and got the takeaway. And Muldoon's already up to 10 points. That matches his average for the season, and that was off a of picket. That was some wise basketball there by Paxson Sullivan. He saw who that went off of and let it go out, kept in front of Muldoon and preserved an extra possession for Marion. A wide open for three is Norgard, and Elias Norgard gets it to fall from beyond the arc. Marion's 4-7. and seven. They're hanging around against this 8-3 and three Blackhawk Christian team. Marion's been using this 2-3 zone for majority of the night. Muldoon, through some traffic, tries to slip it to Pickett, but it's right through his hands. And getting past the pack is Brandon Foster, and he puts it in. First bucket for Foster in this game. Muldoon uses the screen and it's stolen away. William Owens got right in front of Kellen Pickett for the steal. Norgard was thinking about letting that one fly. 
Warnell into the paint, contested, doesn't matter. Warnell gets it to go. Ben Warnell has his first points of the game. There's Pickett on the inside. Muldoon drives, throws it away. That hit one of the cheerleaders. Back on deck for Braves, 23. Bryce Sexton. I think Pickett was looking for Smith, but Smith was not in the right place to receive that pass. Owens driving. He's had Pickett on him most of the night. He's been able to do some good work defensively against him. As Norgard drives, his shot comes up short, and Pickett comes from the help side to get the board. It's Pickett running the floor here, and it's knocked away by Owens. Pickett creates the turnover into the hands of Jackson Hauser. Sefton saw the defender closing in and pulled it down. Smith's going to let it fly. Put it down. Isaac Smith ties it up. And now Rob Berger wants a timeout. And he's going to get one. That's the first timeout taken by either team so far in this game. Well, while they take a timeout, we will go to a quick break and get a few words in from our sponsors. New state-of-the-art car wash facilities. Free car washes are available when you buy from Kelly Automotive and shop online at drivekelly.com. At Ottenweller Contracting, we invest in our customers by providing peace of mind during the entire process from bid to build. Visit ottenwellercontracting.com. One thing that's made a huge difference in this game is the zone defense for Marion. They've been able to help keep Kellen Pickett at bay. We've seen a couple times where Braves have tried to get it to pick it in tight windows, but have not been able to do so. Here's Moss, the handoff. Norgard hands that one back to Most. Jackson Horvath picked up by his number 11 counterpart, Isaac Smith. As Moss looks to go baseline, Muldoon, a scrappy defender that he is, not making it easy for him. 3.25 left to go in this second quarter. Contested shot. That's Sefton with a closeout. And Hauser had it ripped away, but they're going to call a foul on Ben Warnell. Check that, they get Norgard. Elias Norgard called for the foul. Either way, it will be Braves ball in a tie ball game as Marion sticks with the 2-3 zone. Muldoon I think threw it off the defender there by accident. Smith will try again, not this time. He hit his last three but couldn't get that one to go. Driving to the basket is Foster. He kicks that one outside to Norgard. Norgard has Hauser on him. A little bit of space there on that screen from Moss, but the three doesn't fall. It was Jackson Horvath who shot it. Moss set the screen for him as Sefton looks inside against this zone and decides to swing it outside to Smith. Pickett trying to go to work. Off the glass, he scores. And an official's timeout has been called. Not sure what the timeout was for. He's just going to give the ball back to Norgard and have him inbound it. But Kellen Pickett so far held to just four points on the night. Braves were able to get him a really good look on that last possession. Off the hands of Muldoon. He's got the steal. Has the trailing picket, but it's off his hands. Aiden Muldoon has created multiple turnovers tonight when Blackhawks been on defense, and unfortunately, 
Pickett couldn't hang on to the ball, and the Braves turned that over right after the forced turnover. Moss feeds it outside. That's Norgard. His three is long. That would have been for the lead, but Pickett grabs the board. From the corner, it's Hauser. He hits a three. Jackson Hauser off the bench, and he can hit from out there. You just saw an example of it. To the basket goes Warnell. Gets two back for the Knights. A quick bucket for Marion. They set up in their 2-3 zone. As a team, the Braves have four made threes in this game. Two of those belong to Muldoon, but he'll let Hauser let this one fly. No good that time. Jackson Horvath chases down the board, and he feeds it off to Jordan Most. Warnell, defender falls down. Warnell gets it back, and it's recovered by Muldoon. The visiting crowd wanted a flop call on the Braves as Smith takes it to the bucket. Isaac Smith there to score in transition, and we're down to 45 seconds. Out of bounds, Marion Ball, 43 seconds showing on the clock now. Do have an update from another one of our games, Snyder. Leads Northrop 13-9 in boys basketball. That's That was at the end of the first quarter, the most recent update we got from that game. Oh, Muldoon is there, another steal. This time Pickett finds it, and then he finds Smith, and Smith finds two more points in transition. Well, the Braves have their largest lead of the game off that bucket. Back-to-back -back transition buckets for Smith. We're down to 23 seconds. Looks like Marion's going to hold for the final shot. They can make this a two-score game with any made basket here. And off to Moss. They work it down to 12. Patient possession as Moss drives and kicks, and it's off the hands of Jackson Horvath. And with 5.7 seconds left, the Braves take over. Not a whole lot of time. Oh, stolen away. Miscommunication, and it's a bucket for Sullivan. Sullivan. Down the floor, Pickett didn't get it off in time. Well, that's not the way Blackhawk Christian wanted to end the half. That was miscommunication on that pass, and Sullivan takes advantage for two points. It's a five-point game here at halftime here at Mark Davidson Court on the campus of Blackhawk Christian School. Well, we will get a few words in from our sponsors while we have a brief moment as the fourth grade future Braves are taking the court for a little halftime entertainment. Tom Steele Tire has been servicing the Fort Wayne area for over 40 years. They will help you find the perfect tire for your vehicle and other auto repair services. Summit Volleyball trains and builds the highest quality volleyball players in the area from ages 5 to 18. Jump on board. Together, we can reach the summit. Yes, jump on board indeed as you hear the famous Van Halen song playing here at Blackhawk Christian School. With that, we will take a break and come back for the first half statistics. Get some more words in from our sponsors here on SummitCitySports.com. Anderson Heating and Air, locally owned and operated with over 50 years of experience. Call us today and get a free quote on a brand new furnace and AC, financed and available. Don't wait. Call us today and sign up for our maintenance agreement and stay cool. Our maintenance agreements will ensure that you're first in line if you have an emergency and we'll send one of our service techs out for cleanings twice a year. Call us at 557-0958 or request an appointment on our website. Call Anderson Heating and Air, where your emergency is our emergency. Thank you for watching Summit City Sports. To help broaden our coverage, we're asking you to become a monthly sponsor to our Patreon account. We produce weekly highlights and live video broadcast. When the Homestead Girls Golf Team won its first state title in program history, we were there. When Fort Wayne brought back three state titles in cross country, we were there. We believe in sharing positive stories and setting the standard for how high school sports should be covered. Join us and donate today. Come 
Why choose Kelly Chevrolet? We offer a wide selection of new and used inventory with a team that guides you to your perfect fit. Our certified pre-owned options ensure peace of mind with warranties and rigorous inspections. Competitive pricing, flexible financing, and convenient trade and services, making your dream Chevrolet a reality. Trust our experienced service team to keep your vehicle in top shape and enjoy free car washes as long as you own your vehicle. 32 to 27 in favor of Blackhawk Christian at halftime. What you're seeing right now on the court is the fourth grade future Braves playing a little halftime game, part of our halftime entertainment tonight. Excuse me there, folks. 32 to 27 on the scoreboard for Blackhawk Christian. They lead Mishawaka Marion, but the Knights have come to play. More on that after we get a few words in from some more of our sponsors. Anderson Heating and Air Conditioning is dedicated to providing the best possible solution for your home or business, a system and solution that fits your unique needs. Visit andersoncoolheat.com. Ready to do what it takes to put your past behind you, whether it's expunging your criminal record or helping to get your driver's license reinstated. Jolly Law Firm is your answer. Sioka Cleaning and Restoration providing top-notch commercial cleaning services, including janitorial, water damage, and state-of-the-art disinfecting services. Online degree programs at the University of St. Francis are built for convenience and flexibility. Most degrees can be completed in 12 months. Visit online.sf.edu for more information. Again, our score is Blackhawk Christian leading Mishawaka Marion 32-27. to Marion's been able to stay in this game in large part because of their 3-2 zone and also because they've been able to play some really good defense on Kellen Pickett. We'll show you a little bit of that here, and it wasn't just Kellen Pickett who got a taste of Marion's good defense here. Going to see, I think it's Bryce Sefton. Yep, Bryce Sefton got a little taste of Marion's defense, and then Pickett gets blocked. That's Zion Rhodes with two block shots and one possession for the Knights. Blocks both Sefton and Pickett en route to a bucket for the Knights. But one player who's had an excellent game for Blackhawk Christian has been the point guard, Aiden Muldoon. He's gotten it done on offense. He's gotten it done on defense. And you'll see some of his defense here as Muldoon comes up with a steal and then pick it with a good look to Isaac Smith, who puts it in. That was one of back-to-back -back transition buckets for Smith. He's got nine points. Muldoon has ten. Go ahead and give you a look at the rest of the scoring when we come back. You're watching High School Basketball on SummitCitySports.com. Welcome to the Summit City, home to the two six O's dedicated high school athletes and fans. Each victory and celebration captured by our camera. Treasure the highlights from the Summit Athletic Conference this season or complete games live or on demand. After all, nobody's more proud to call Fort Wayne home than SummitCitySports.com. Dealing with joint pains, sprains, strains, or back pain? Make the Parkview Ortho Express Walk-In Clinic your first stop when you have an orthopedic or sports injury. Located at the Sport One Parkview Fieldhouse, Ortho Express has specialized orthopedic physicians on staff when you need it most. Get x-rays, treatment, and referrals to Parkview Care, all in the convenience of a walk-in clinic. Ortho Express is open Monday through Thursday from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. and Friday 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. Call 260-266-4007 for more. Halftime here at Mark Davidson Court. Blackhawk Christian leads 32-27 over Mishawaka Marion. We do have a few more words to get in from our sponsors, so we will go ahead and do that right now. TJW Industrial. 
Specialists in design, build, mechanical, and refrigeration. Visit TJWIndustrial.com. Earn your edge this season. Parkview Sports Medicine's Edge Training Program maximizes your athleticism through personalized performance training to reach your goals and get you to the next level. Visit parkviewsportsmedicine.com slash edge to schedule your free consultation. And today's broadcast is brought to you by summitcitysports.com. Follow us on Twitter at 260 Sports. Like our Facebook page, Summit City Sports, and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Well, look at the first half scoring for you in this game. I've got Paxson Sullivan as the leading scorer for Marion. He's got eight points. Zion Rhodes, William Owens, and Ben Warnell have four apiece. Elias Norgard has three. Jackson Horvath and Brandon Foster have two apiece. And for Blackhawk Christian, their leading scorer so far is Aiden Muldoon. He's got ten points. Isaac Smith has nine. In addition to that, Kellen Pickett's been held to just four points so far. Will Guthrie has been held to four so far. However, Blackhawk Christian does lead it by five. And, of course, there's still a whole other half of basketball to be played. Marion has defended Kellen Pickett extremely well tonight, but a great player can get it going at any moment. Can Blackhawk Christian figure out this zone defense? They've been able to at various times. They closed out the first half with back-to-back -back transition buckets created by Aiden Muldoon steals. However, Marion did get the final basket of the half. That was Ben Warnell, excuse me, Paxson Sullivan, who put it in off a steal of his own at the end of the half. We are back in about 42 seconds. You're watching High School Basketball on SummitCitySports.com. Second half about to get underway here at Blackhawk Christian. The Braves so far with the lead, 32-27, as uh, will sort of take the court to the sounds of Indiana's own John Mellencamp, his song Small Town. They play that a lot around here. Blackhawk Christian may not be a small town, but it's a town where they got pride in the state of Indiana and pride in basketball, especially here at Blackhawk Christian. It's a packed house here at Mark Davidson Court. So the Braves do get the ball out of bounds on the last call as Smith goes for three and hits it. Isaac Smith had the last four points of the first half for Blackhawk Christian. He's got 12 total for the game with that triple. This eight-point lead is the largest that the Braves have had. Sullivan looking for the feed, instead goes to Rhodes. A catch and shoot for Jordan Most, and he answers right back. And I do believe that's Moss first made three of the game, and Marion not going away. Smith feeds Guthrie. Knocked away, but Sefton recovers and finds Muldoon. He passed that thing in midair. Smith a little bit long, but Pickett's right there. Kellen Pickett, Johnny on the spot. Got good position on the inside as Rhodes lost it, but they're going to call it out off the Braves, and Rhodes springs back to his feet. But after he did so, the way he was moving his legs looked like he might be bothered by something. Well, bothered as he might be, he's going to stick this out. And they get it into him. Horvath gets cut off by Smith. Wide open, William Owens for three, and it rattles home. Back-to-back -back threes have gotten Marion within four. Over to Muldoon, extra pass, Sefton. Sefton drives, down the paint, high off the glass, no good. Pickett 
missed the dunk, still battling, and he gets fouled. The question is, was it on the shot? And it looks like they're going to say it was. Jordan Moss called for the foul. Pickett goes to the line to shoot a pair of free throws. Puts together a good battle there, and this first one goes. Crowd lobbing that it should have been a foul on the floor, and might have a point there. It's a question of was Pickett actually going for the shot, or was he just simply trying to secure the ball? But it's called in real time, and when you call it in real time, calls aren't easy to make. Sullivan slows down. Rhodes looking to drive on Guthrie. Are they going to call goaltending? Official came in from the far side, and I think they are going to call goaltending. Foul on the shot, and the ball was on its way down, and goaltending is the call. Not only was the ball on its way down, it hit the backboard. And that was clear as day. We'll take another look at it on our Traction AP replay here in just a second, but it looked pretty clear that that ball did in fact go off the backboard and free throw doesn't go. We'll look at it probably at our next break, depending on what takes place between now and then. Guthrie with the feet outside to Sefton. Pickett wanted to let it fly, instead drives and it's knocked away. Rhodes got a hand on the ball and Horvath is fouled and Muldoon beside himself after the foul. He got him on the arm. Well now we will take a look at that last goal 10. Our replays, of course, are brought to you by Traction Athletic Replay. You'll see Rhodes on the drive here. Well, it was pretty close. I thought initially the ball hit off the backboard. Looked like it did there, but not uh, by as much as I thought initially. First free throw's no good. Jackson Horvath gets one more chance. And he gets this one. That's three points for Horvath as Blackhawk Christian's lead is down to three. Smith going to let it fly again, and that's off the mark, but Pickett's there, and he puts it in. Kellen Pickett, another put back for the Braves. Well, he's got his double-digit scoring night. He's got two offensive putbacks here in this second half. Sullivan drives, dishes that one to Horvath. Horvath around the screen, leans in from the free throw line, and it goes. Well, Horvath had an easy bucket right in front of him, and he took it. Smith, cross court, Muldoon. Sefton lets it fly. Got it. Bryce Sefton from downtown. And Sefton's got his first triple of the game. He's got his first points of the game as well. Sullivan driving right over Pickett, too strong, and Pickett does get the board for Blackhawk Christian, and he'll run the floor. Smith wide open, lets it fly, got it. Rob Berger was calling shooter, 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 and the shooter, Isaac Smith, knocked it down right away. Well, this is why you call out shooter when Isaac Smith is wide open. We're going to show it to you right here on our Traction AP replay. Of course, it starts with, again, good defense by Aiden Muldoon. He's been doing that all night long. And Kellen Pickett with the help side defense. And why not let the big man run the floor? Well, when he can find a wide open Isaac Smith like that, go ahead, let him run the floor, and let the sharp shooter Isaac Smith knock it down. I believe that's Smith's third triple of the game so far. I've got him for 15 points. And now the Braves with a nine-point lead. That is their largest of the game. Back in action for Marion is number 23, Elias Norgard. Elias Norgard back in for Mishawaka Marion. And Blackhawk Christian goes on the road tomorrow night. They'll take on Concordia. That will be at the cage. A 7.30 tip thereabouts after the JV game gets done. I will be there to bring you the call. Zion Rhodes goes for the three. It's off the mark, and Muldoon was all by his lonesome to get that board. 
They feed it inside Smith. Right through a crease goes Sefton and Smith makes good on it. 17 points for Smith. Jordan Moss down the floor, gives that one up to Rhodes. Rhodes backing in, feeds that one over to Owens. Moss for three, that comes up short, and Pickett reached up with a right hand and got the board. Sefton fakes it, now drives. Pickett into the paint, dumps it off to Guthrie. Pickett down the baseline, crazy circus shot won't fall. Here's Owens back down the other way. Rhodes sets the screen for him. Pickett threw out the elbow. He's going to block the shot here. No foul was called. Most keeps it alive for Marion. Norgard's three doesn't go, and Smith's got the ball. Pickett sets the screen. Muldoon zips it through. Guthrie, no good. It was blocked by Norgard, and then Guthrie commits the foul. In the game comes Brandon Foster for Marion. It's an 11-point lead for the Braves, their largest of the game. Marion put together a good battle in the first half. But the Braves are currently on an 8-0 run. Here's Most. Foster uses the screen from Owens. Now Owens sets the screen for Norgard. Been man-to-man -man defense much of the night for the Braves. Smith closes in on the three-point attempt. It won't fall, and Guthrie has the board. Sefton slows it down and hands back to Muldoon. Muldoon had the ten points in the first half and so many great defensive plays as well. That's a long three. Bryce Sefton, oh, he got it. That's NBA range. Bryce Sefton from downtown. Sefton's got his second three of the ball game. Spinning in, Norgard won't roll in. Norgard gets his own miss. Oh, he keeps it alive, and then Smith swats it away. And luckily, Pickett was there. I think he was looking for Muldoon at first, but Pickett saves the possession. Muldoon through traffic. Contested three this time. Oh, Sefton, he's feeling it now. Sefton hit a long three on the last possession. This time he hits one with a hand right in his face, and then Owens right back at you. He scores the deuce. Muldoon with Most on him as Pickett sets the screen. Smith lets it fly. Too strong. Pickett's there. Blocked. Rhodes with the rejection. He's had a couple of those tonight. We showed you one earlier. 47 seconds to go in this third quarter. Foul is called, and that will send Rhodes to the free throw line. Matt Ross going to dig into his bench. He'll call upon Luke Mansfield, the junior guard, six foot three guard. He's ready to check in after this first free throw by Rhodes. And Rhodes does get the first one to go. Rhodes averaging over 11 points per game, averaging just shy of 12 per game. He's got five so far. We do have a whole other quarter to play. 45.7 seconds left here in the third. One for two goes Rhodes, but it's an offensive board for Brandon Foster. Down to 37 seconds. Norgard was thinking about a long three. Norgard gets into the paint. Marion doesn't have to shoot it here. There's no shot clock in IHSAA basketball, and there's 23 seconds left. If they get a bucket here, could potentially establish some momentum for themselves. They've scored the last three points, and now they've got a chance to add to that run. Norgard draws the foul. It looked like Mansfield. Nope, they get Pickett instead. 
Fifth team foul, and now Marion's in the double bonus. Elias Norgard shooting two. Elias Norgard at the free throw line. My thought initially was that Marion might try to run the clock down before they go for the shot as Norgard misses the front end. They can make this a 4-0 run if Norgard gets this second bucket. He does. Muldoon running the point, down to 11 seconds. Pickett sets the screen for him. Muldoon into the paint, spinning around, too strong, and Pickett looked like he climbed over the back. Did they get him for the foul? No, they call it on Most. Rob Berger, as well as the Marion fans, clearly not in agreement with the call, and I thought it was over the back when I watched it. Well, with 4.2 seconds, the Braves get the ball back as Smith fires, hits another three. His fourth of the game, Isaac Smith, to close out the quarter. And the Braves lead it by 16. That's 20 points for Isaac Smith. And we will go to the fourth quarter after this break on SummitCitySports.com. Anderson Heating and Air, locally owned and operated with over 50 years of experience. Call us today and get a free quote on a brand new furnace and AC, financed and available. Don't wait. Call us today and sign up for a maintenance agreement and stay cool. Our maintenance agreements will ensure that you're first in line if you have an emergency and we'll send one of our service techs out for cleanings twice a year. Call us at 557-0958 or request an appointment on our website. Call Anderson Heating and Air where your emergency is our emergency. Well, it is a 16-point lead for the Braves, and when we go to our next stoppage in play, we will give you a look at what was not called over the back and what I initially thought was over the back, but may have been the right call in the end, having looked at the replay. This is Jordan Moss with the basketball. Of course, that was what led to Isaac Smith's three. Rhodes puts it up and draws the foul. Well, now that we have that stoppage in play, we will go ahead and show you that replay brought to you, as always, by Traction Athletic Performance. Here's another look at it, and if you notice there, Moss actually kind of backed into the legs of Pickett, if you will. That's probably the most family-friendly way I can put it. So I think that's what the official saw, and that's why he called the defensive foul as opposed to over the back on Pickett. Zion Rhodes did make the first of two free throws. Second one rims out, and they're going to call it off of Norgard. Of course, that did lead to Isaac Smith's three to close out the third quarter. Smith zips it inside. He was looking for Mansfield. The pass goes long. Well, other than that, Smith has had a pretty nice night. We'll take a look at his most recent three. It's brought to you by Traction Athletic Performance. This was right off the foul called on the Knights, and Smith, with a hand in his face, knocks it down. Smith with 20 points in the game. I've got him for four threes. I might have to check on that. He might actually have five. Who touched that last? They're going to say Norgard as it goes out of bounds just to the, the right of the student section, at least from my vantage point as well as from your vantage point as you watch the game at home. Loose ball poked away by Moss. Norgard back to him. Moss fires and hits a three. Well, Marion's got the first four points. And are they calling that a two? Apparently the first three points. As it stands, it's five points for Moss, and the Braves turn it over. Time out. But now the Braves are going to call a timeout. That's the first time that Matt Roth has had to call a timeout. Well, while they take a timeout, we will also take a timeout here on SummitCitySports.com.
58 to 45, Blackhawk Christian. However, Marion has scored the first three points of this fourth quarter. We're just a minute into the quarter. As Rhodes drives inside and dishes that one back out to Foster. Foster has Muldoon on him. Muldoon's had a great game both offensively and defensively, but he does have three fouls as well. Oh, Norgard, a little teardrop type shot. Elias Norgard. At six points for Norgard, and it's a 5-0 run to start the fourth for the Knights. Muldoon has it knocked away. Zion Rhodes creates the turnover, and Foster takes it to the cup. And Marion's back within nine. Marion forcing turnovers with their zone defense was a big difference maker. Now looks like they're in the man-to-man, -man and they almost forced another one. Warnell got his hand in there. But it was Warnell who knocked it out of bounds. 6.03 to go. Braves still have yet to score here in the fourth quarter. Seven straight points scored by Marion. Pickett has it. Hands it back to Muldoon. Muldoon was a big time scorer for the Braves early on in this one. At 10 points in the first half. He's been quiet since. Pickett swings it out to Mansfield. And they get it right back to Muldoon with 5.45 on the clock. That's another long three. Sefton hits another one. Not sure that was quite from NBA range, but it was long enough, and Sefton knocked it down. Back on the other end, that three won't fall. There's Smith for the board for Blackhawk. That's Pickett driving into the paint. He leans into the shot and scores. There's five straight for the Braves. Braves come up with the answer. Pickett's up to 12 for the game. Bryce Sefton, meanwhile, has four threes in the game for the Braves. I believe he and Smith have the same three-point total. Norgard off the side of the rim, and Pickett able to secure the board. Guthrie, the lob, Pickett one-on-one -on -one with Rhodes. When Rhodes has been on Pickett, he's been able to defend him quite well. Rhodes gives up about five inches to Pickett. There's a block shot by Owens. Marion not out of it yet. We got four and a half to go. Norgard going to draw a blocking foul here. Looked like he was falling down there, but they'll call it on the Braves. Luke Mansfield is called for the foul. Do have an update for you. Wayne and Northside are in the second quarter. Wayne leads that one 27-26. That's boys basketball, by the way. The girls' teams have already played. Snyder and Northrop are in the third quarter. Snyder leads that one 35-22. Snyder looking to bounce back after Tuesday night's loss to New Haven. As Rhodes... Almost had it taken away. Smith came in defensively. The shot won't fall, and Pickett comes down with the board for the Braves. Wayne will be in action again tomorrow, but that north side game is basically between the top two teams in the SAC. Pickett able to recover. Goes down the baseline, hits the reverse, and one. Marion has done such a great job defensively on Pickett, but Pickett has found his shot here in the second half, and that's easily the most difficult shot he's made in this game. And he does complete the three-point play. And the Braves now with a 17-point lead, and I do believe that matches their largest lead of the game. Owens. Looking to drive against a 3-2 zone. He hits Foster. Oh, Smith swatted that one away. Finally, Mansfield collects it. Sefton. 
Almost has it ripped away. He finds Pickett. Pickett leaning in. Count it. And a foul. Oh, that looked dangerous when Pickett went down. He makes the bucket. And he gets a trip to the free throw line. We won't say he stuck the landing, but he stuck the shot, no doubt. And the Braves remain up 19, kept alive by Mansfield. Well, a great player can find his shot at any point in time. Got another update. Carroll leads Bishop Dwinger 30 to 23 at halftime. Pickett, just like a wide receiver, goes up for that one, but then they turn it over. Moss down the floor. Owens drives, feeds it out. That's Rhodes for three. Comes up short. And it comes out to Isaac Smith. Loose ball. Who's got it? A battle for it. That's going to be a jump ball, and the arrow favors Blackhawk Christian. Back in action for the Braves is number 12, Jackson Hauser. Jackson Hauser re enters for Blackhawk Christian. Hauser hasn't been in very often, but he is a good three-point shooter when you get the ball to him. They get the ball to pick it here. Smith from the corner, short on the three ball. Loose ball, kept alive by Bryce Sefton, and it's Hauser who secures it. Coming up on two minutes to play, and Muldoon gets fouled. That's going to be the third team foul on the Knights. They call it on Brandon Foster and a wholesale substitution for Marion with this game at 2.23 to play. Well, I think Wayne might have just taken the lead. They were tied with Northside, or nope, they waved off the basket. Meanwhile, here at Blackhawk, Christian, the Braves trying to secure a win, go to 9-3. and three. Another deep three. Oh, if Sefton had made that one, it would have torn the roof off the gym, but I think Pickett just took care of that. Big-time slam for Pickett. Little floater in the paint. That's Isaiah Watts who couldn't get it to fall. Here's Muldoon down the floor. Smith trying again. Comes up short. And the board pulled down by Prescott Horvath. Watts into the paint. Trying to get away from trouble as Murphy knocked away. Sefton got a hand on it. And hustling after the ball is Murphy. Oh, and now a big contact, big collision there. The Braves are trying to get Eric Logan, I think, off of their teammate. Well, everybody's up off the floor. That's good news. And now Matt Roth is going to dig into his bench. I think the officials spotted a wet portion there on the court right next to the volleyball line, or did they? Well, if anything was wet over there, it took nothing for the official to sop it up with his shoes. Minute 20 to go. They feed this one inside. Horvath, foul. Surrounded by a whole host of Braves. Well, if the Brave starters wanted a final curtain call, we have it for you on our Traction AP replay. They're done for the night with a 21-point lead. It started with Bryce Sefton going for the deepest three of the game. Didn't quite fall, but Kellen Pickett not only got the board, but stuffed it down right in the face of an opponent. Prescott Horvath, meanwhile, on the board for the first time today. Handoff here goes 
to Sam Schwartz, and Schwartz has it taken away. Who'd that go off of? It went off the Braves. Well, Sam Schwartz, you might remember him from the baseball field. Made a big, made a great catch out in right center field fighting the sun in Blackhawk Christian's semi-state game against Marquette Catholic. That was over in Lafayette. Came close to robbing a base hit from Navy on Warren when the Braves played Snyder. That three ball is good. That's Norgard. His second three of the ball game. Down to 40 seconds, and Blackhawk doesn't really need to shoot, although they've got all backups in the floor, so I'm sure somebody is going to eventually take a shot, maybe drain time off the clock, then take a shot. Here's Hauser, down to 27 seconds. Sam Schwartz contested three. That's too strong. Norgard trying to get past Gray. He brings it back outside as the clock is down to 12 seconds. It's going to be a win for Blackhawk Christian. They're going to go to 9-3 and three on the season. Horvath on the inside, too strong. That's secured by Christian Webster. And the Braves won't even have to beat the 10-second clock. They'll just run the time off the clock, and they win it 70-54. to 54. The Blackhawk Christian Braves, a winner tonight on their home floor, Mark Davidson Court. And they will go to 9-3 and three on the season and a somewhat quick turnaround. They'll take on Concordia. Should start around the same time that this one did, about 7.30. That'll be over at the cage. I'll have it for you right here on SummitCitySports.com. Concordia was playing Lures tonight. Not sure what the score of that one was. But regardless of that, it's a win for Blackhawk Christian, and they go to 9-3 and three on the season. Well, our Parkview Sports Medicine players of the game are going to be announced in just a moment because the Braves are going to do their post-game prayer with the Knights. That's become a tradition here at Blackhawk Christian in recent years. Braves are a winner, 70-54 to tonight over Mishawaka Marion. And we're going to recognize three guys as our Parkview Sports Medicine players of the game, three guys who helped the Braves close this game out in the second half. Bryce Smith, excuse me, Bryce Sefton, I beg your pardon. Sefton with his four three-pointers in the second half. Isaac Smith with his 20 points, most of which came in the second half. Three of his threes came in the second half. And Kellen Pickett, 19 points in the game, 15 of those coming in the second half. Pickett, Smith, and Sefton are your Parkview Sports Medicine players of the game. And that's going to do it from here at Mark Davidson Court. Braves win it 70-54 to over Mishawaka Marion. They go to 9-3, and three. Marion falls to 4-8. and eight. For my cameraman Thomas Nolan, this is Thad Goff saying so long from Blackhawk Christian School. 70-54 to 54 your final. Braves win it over Marion. Anderson Heating and Air, locally owned and operated with over 50 years of experience. Call us today and get a free quote on a brand new furnace and AC, financed and available. Don't wait. Call us today and sign up for a maintenance agreement and stay cool. Our maintenance agreements will ensure that you're first in line if you have an emergency and we'll send one of our service techs out for cleanings twice a year. Call us at 557-0958 or request an appointment on our website. Call Anderson Heating and Air, where your emergency is our emergency. Thank you for watching Summit City Sports. To help broaden our coverage, we're asking you to become a monthly sponsor to our Patreon account. We produce weekly highlights and live video broadcast. When the Homestead Girls Golf Team won its first state title in program history, we were there. When Fort Wayne brought back three state titles in cross country, we were there. We believe in sharing positive stories and setting the standard for how high school sports should be covered. Join us and donate today. Thank you. 
Why choose Kelly Chevrolet? We offer a wide selection of new and used inventory with a team that guides you to your perfect fit. Our certified pre-owned options ensure peace of mind with warranties and rigorous inspections. Competitive pricing, flexible financing, and convenient trade and services, making your dream Chevrolet a reality. Trust our experienced service team to keep your vehicle in top shape and enjoy free car washes as long as you own your vehicle.